Flip me. Um. Okay, so let's go ahead and get I'm into here. this. I'm here. I'm here for the smoke. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't even know how I can even. Okay, we're about to go and do our review, you guys. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy our uh, reaction. But we're about to go full tilt into episode seventy-seven of Attack on Titan season four. Uh, what did you guys think about um, of this episode? Trash. No, I'm just gonna say it. Trash. No, I'm kidding. No, it, it, yeah. it was another. It was another good episode, but uh, yeah. the ending. Of course, we got the we got the cliffhanger, like the mm-hmm. abrupt cliffhanger, mm-hmm. like, which they don't normally do. Right. right. I don't even know if I could say it was a cliffhanger. More so, if it was just an abrupt cutoff. Like I'm, I'm yeah. kind of, I'm kind of blown about that right now. Like, a, it was, <laughs> you know, there's, there's some things. I have some predictions. I have some other comments but for what i thought about it it, it i i give it about an 85 out of 100 and i took 15 points off for the for the abrupt cutoff you know <laughs> kind of like it's kind of like you're getting ready to see the end of something and then your mama just cuts the tv off and tell you it's time for bed like that's just not fine that's not good that's not good you could have given me an extra an extra 30 seconds to let it come to something hey <laughs> dude i i ain't gonna lie i felt like you know, you in the bed, just chilling and sleeping, and to wake somebody up, somebody threw some water on you. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I really have some emotions right now, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remove the emotions, and the whole entire ride from the beginning of this episode to the end of this episode, I didn't, I couldn't predict it that the Beast Titan was going to be in this episode. Period. Let alone. Right all the things that led up to it like Mm -hmm. the questions like the conversations with gabby and falco and um the situation with mikasa and armin deciding with the group to actually fundamentally still help aaron whether or not you know armin is emotionally compromised because like he's the colossal titan um i I felt like this, this episode was gold it just ended and it ended in a way that I need the next episode right now, but I can't have it. So mm-hmm. I'm hurt. Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel. I, I mean, I don't know where kind of put it. Um, but Aunt, what'd you feel about the episode, man? Man, look, this episode was like, how do I put this? I'm a percussionist. So like the the way I look at it, the way I think about it is, you know, whenever we're tuning our, our, our drums, we kind of mm-hmm. tighten one part and we tighten another part and and Mm -hmm. you kind of rotate your way around and tighten all these different parts. It's like they literally took all of the possible story arcs that were going on at the same time and tightened up the suspense on all of them. All it was. And I'm just like, ooh, this is a lot. A whole lot. It's great. I'm still (laughs) giving it a 9 out of 10. Um, But yeah, that, that cut off at the end. My gosh. That was rough. That was it, rough. It's what we used to call in the old days. It's unforgivable. <laughs> right, right. Can I wait? Can I address something real quick? Because yeah. uh because uh Ken, I, I saw Kenya's comment about uh trying to figure out why Gabby and Falco are important to the show or or get why why are Gabby and Falco important to the show. So because 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 Kenya had asked if we had any predictions before the show, we really kind of got into it, and I did have a prediction. And he kind he's kind of going near it now. Gabby, I'm not so sure. I think I think Gabby more so is that blind loyalist who is now starting to understand Reiner's perspective from his experience being on right. Paradise. That's where I think it's it's key for her. But Falco, my prediction is Zeke's not going to make it, or Zeke's not going to make it, but I think Falco is about to become the next beast Titan. That's my prediction. I think somewhere in that, in that weave, especially because he's got the spinal fluid, I think somewhere down the line, Falco's coming to the end of this, Falco's going to become the next beast Titan. I don't know why. It's just right there. Like I see it like, because it's just random how Falco's got this spinal fluid and they're having a whole big to do about this. And then the, the switch off is now they're focusing on Zeke um, and everything he's doing in this episode as the Beast Titan. So I kind of think the fact that because they were switching between those two, I think 
I think there is a path where Falco is making his way to become the beast type. That's my prediction. Yeah, I think the other side of like why um, Gabby and uh, Falco are so important is because when we started the show, you know, we had a Mikasa, we had like a young Aaron, we had like a young Rainer, and they're in the same exact situation that these. It's to show the generational progression of how if something doesn't stop. This is mm-hmm. going to continue to be maintained. Like we saw it the very first episode of season four. It's like, wow, this literally looks so familiar. Like this, this uncannily familiar. Mm-hmm. And it just happened on a different, you know, location. It happened on mainland. Mm-hmm. And so I think that the whole importance of it is to show like the generational side of violence and, you know, bigotry and prejudice and how it, it creates something beyond just war. Like this is just all a mess. And it's so, it could have been so avoided, but, you know, there's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of craziness going on. And I think that the the lessons that Gabby and Falco are learning are central for any kind of preservation of their future, like as a people. Mm-hmm. So regardless if Falco ends up, you know, which I think that to Ty's point, he's going to inherit some Titan. I don't know if it's going to be Rainer's Titan or if it's going to be, you know, Zeke's Titan, but I think that is going to happen, or they wouldn't have introduced him having the spinal fluid to begin with. Not is that he do anything, like he said, to save or protect his people, including Gabby. Mm-hmm. But it's like now Gabby has gone through an emotional transformation, just like Aaron did in his own right. Like Aaron went through a lot of different things to get to where he is mentally and emotionally now. And I think the same exact thing is happening to Gabby. I just don't know. I don't know what kind of future Gabby has. I think that's more of an interesting thing within these next 15 to 14 episodes. Like what kind of future is she really going to actually have? By the end of this, um, yeah, but, but no, um, dude, this is. I think Ant put it on nail on the head. Like they tackled all the different storylines, all of yeah. them, in some way, shape, form, and Beautiful. just spun us. <laughs> because I was yeah. just like, "Wait, hold up, what? What's going on?" You know, and um, yeah, dude, I, I could have never predicted that we'd get so much. And just this one episode, even though the episode felt short, there's so much substance in the episode. I think that's the reason why yeah. I, I'm still, I don't know where I'm going to rate this yet. Um, I honestly, I feel like what Kenya said, like, I need to go watch this again. I, I feel like yep. I, need to, I need to immediately go and watch this again if I could. Yeah, I would. Mm-hmm. Yep, I do there's too. some importance to this episode that we're not going to be able to feel the ramifications of until by the end of it. Um, oh, yeah. The setup is just crazy, bro. Like, did y'all think that Zeke was gonna show up? Did anybody think that I was gonna happen? I didn't think he was going. I didn't think he was gonna get there in time. And it's funny yeah. that that was the first thing he said. Like, little bro, I know I'm a little late, but I'm here. Right. I'll leave the rest of me. Like, yeah, that was so. And for him to show up so late in the episode, we should have known. Like you were saying, like saying, like, yo, wait, how much? Time, how much more time do we have in this thing? This is about <laughs> to cut off. And sure enough, boom fade to black you were like really really right. um but no that 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 was definitely a thing and, and like on a on a slightly different to- note is it just me or have they kind of been trying to draw parallels between gabby and and um aaron yes from jump they have yeah they have. because it's because same exact situation yeah it's like it's like sam said uh gabby falco and rainer although Rainer being the older one of the three, is basically Aaron, Aaron Armin, Mikasa, and, and Armin. Mm-hmm. It's just from the mainland side of things. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, Gabby is that extremist. Gabby is like the other side of the coin for Aaron, like the full-on extremist. Mm-hmm. Um, right. <clears throat> and she is... Uh, she is young Aaron. Aaron is now more of a tactician. Aaron has now gone beyond just the extremist to I want to say almost Bond like villainy, like global villainy, you know, like he's just like, we're about to just wipe the slate clean. She's not there yet. She (laughs) has just uh, inherited the prejudice and accepted that, you know, these folks on this island are devils, you know, and all that, or at least she did until she came to understand Reiner's perspective. You right. know, Falco is Falco is more, um, in my opinion, Armin. 
You know, he's just, I, I don't think Ar- I don't think he, I, he clearly to me doesn't match Armin in terms of intelligence. Um, but he, like Armin, uh, Falco does see the world from a unique point of view. Right. And he's able to siphon through what he sees and pulls out, you know, the best in people, even <laughs> if sometimes they don't deserve it. Um, he sees it anyway. And of course, Reiner is, Reiner, of course, is Mikasa, you know, because even Reiner wanted to look out for them the way Mikasa looks out for Armin and Aaron. But even what I noticed, especially with Mikasa and and Reiner at this moment, they're in a they're in a place of extreme doubt, right. you know, and more so. And honestly, for both of them, it's because of Aaron. Aaron has basically made them question themselves, especially Mikasa, who has stood by his side the whole time. Right. And now in her mind, I'm sure it's always been the truth is, is that she loves him, you know. They may not have broached the subject, but I think the truth is she loves him. And on top of that, I think Aaron also knows it. But the but the fact that Aaron is such an extreme tactician now to utilize her blood as doubt, you know, which I think, in my opinion, I think he he's caused this seed of doubt in her and this uh, opposition or 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 uh, you know brush off of friendship between him and Armin. Because I think he's trying to keep them away from what he's intentionally trying to do. I, I just I, I I don't think he 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 has any ill will towards them. He's just willing to do whatever it takes to keep to take them off the board. Right. So when this rumbling they've been talking about happens, they're able to move forward into the world he's envisioning. You know, without them being you know victims or collateral damage from it. Right. And the funny thing you even bring that up, Ty, is because. If Aaron had never did what he did, threatened them, put in these seeds of doubt, they would have, from the beginning of the attack, they would have been right there from the very beginning, without mm-hmm. a question. Like, Armin mm-hmm. would have not even hesitated. Um, but the way things are, they're, even if they try to, they're not going to be able to get to Aaron in time for whatever is about to happen. So I go back to this because I keep bringing it up. Do you think... Or do you guys think that Aaron has seen all of this and is positioning people in a certain way for a reason? Um, Like, do you think that he had a vision about where all this is going to happen and what is required of him um, and how to maneuver people away that he really cares about? Do y'all think that's possible or... Chitty, I'm going to let you take that one, bro. (laughs) Yeah, no, I absolutely think uh he's like you said kind of kind of putting Armin and Mikasa at a bit of a hand, a bit of a arm's length just so they could be where they need to be when things happen later on. Mm-hmm. Um again it's weird to have that thought process when uh we as the audience don't really know where he's going with it. But right. it it he's just moving in such a such a specific and efficient ma- manner like he's not wasting any extra thought or any extra actions into anything he's doing to get people right. where they need to be and to be mm-hmm. himself where he needs to be so yeah no i definitely think that's that's in there we we know he has that ability right i i think i think whatever happened between season 3 and season 4 what we kind of didn't see even though they kind of go through it, but not in as crazy detail. Um, when they got to the edge of the sea and between when Aaron just kind of goes full Titan on the mainland, something within there, including his encounter with Zeke, changed him. Or I won't say changed, but maybe evolved him. You know, Aaron reminds me a lot of um of uh, the main character from infamous especially uh infamous second son you know mm-hmm. um he's developed up to a certain point but then certain decisions or certain encounters will either evolve him for good or evil 
And I think whatever happened to him in that time as he was undercover and met up with his brother and everything else has turned him into what he is now, which mm. I think is for the betterment of everyone. However, he understands that in order to get that done, he has to be the beast that he's been trying to fight. He's, you know, he wanted to kill all Titans and now he's beyond that. He's like, I just want to clear the board, mm. you know, where Titans aren't even a factor. But he also understands that based on what he's seen, that particular uh, prejudice um, that he's seen between uh, the Marleans and the Eldians undercover, I think he's just gotten to the point where it's not about getting revenge on the Titans and being a Titan to get revenge. But it's about clearing this board, clearing out this prejudice, clearing out this racial divide where this country is utilizing his people, although they hate them, they're utilizing them to want to expand, you know. Right. So I think he's just like, we're just going to clear the whole board and we're we're going to move. And I think he needs he knows he needs his brother to do that. You know, and I've got another. I got another piece, but we'll. I'll. I'll I think I'll save that for you guys offline. We'll talk offline on that. Yeah, because I mean, well, I don't know if this is where you were going with it, but I'm wondering if kind of like how, which I think is Ymir, the original Ymir, mm -hmm. um, helped out Zeke in protecting him just for this specific moment. Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. possible that she's also? shown Aaron because it's kind of like it's weird in your point like you were saying between season three and season four this man had a jump in ability mm -hmm. and I'm like it doesn't matter how many times you sit there and you know cut your leg off and test your limits and push yourself like you have to get some kind of help with the 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 uses of abilities that he's been able to do in season four is unnatural like the progression is just so fast and I'm wondering if He's been, you know, being trained secretly or being brought information secretly from Ymir. Um, and I think that that mm. also ties in with his understanding of what's got to happen because he might know the future. But I was just curious y'all's perspective on that, too, because it feels like it lines up with whatever Ty was going with with that. I have that, some thoughts that. on that, but I want to hear I want to hear Chitty's perspective. <laughs> I have, I do have thoughts on that though concerning Amir. Yeah, no, I, I, all of the Titan abilities came from Amir in the first place, so it makes sense that Amir, in uh, him being able to kind of see the future, see the past, and whatnot, that most definitely Amir uh, mm -hmm. is kind of kind of letting him know what he got to do. And the crazy part is he's had experiences so far that have put him in a place where he's ready to do it by any means necessary. <laughs> like, right. it's one thing to know what to do. So that's the thing to be ready and willing to do it. Right. right. That's true. So for my, my, my thought is, I think I think Amir and this is just my thought. I think Amir did save Zeke for this purpose. But I think I think there's some personal things with Amir. This is just my thought. I think there's some personal things with Amir that she may not have done in her lifetime that she is trying to resolve now. Hmm. I because you know, you see her, you know, in the sand and you know the other realm or the paths as they call it, and she's picking up sand and molding things. I think Amir had unfinished business, and I think she has unfinished business based on the choices she made when she was the founding titan. When she had the powers. Uh, I don't think she utilized them completely as she may have wanted. In fact, depending on how far back they've gone, if it's anything like uh, human history, you know, her being a, a woman or a young woman, she may have been utilized and 
abused the same way the Marleans have been doing it with the Eldians. So there's a possibility that when she moved on and, you know, the uh, the founding Titan genes got passed on, this pathway where she's at um, may have been, and Kenya, I don't think they've talked about where she come from yet, and I hope they cover it, because I, I would love to see how Emir, you know, got the powers and what happened after that. Yeah, but I, I think, I think my my thesis is she happened to come into this power um she may have you know being emotional being young she may have revealed it to someone and someone may have used that to their advantage um with the eldian race and utilized her for it and she may have had a traumatic experience within there that after her death she may have realized that this isn't the way it should go and it, no one should really have it. And she may have been plotting everything from the past to bring it to this point where the Titans can just be, or the, the Titan gene, or at least, uh, yeah, the Titan gene, or just a modif modific gene modification of the Eldians to make sure no one can become a Titan. Mm. I think that's what she, she may have been building to, at least I, that's what my my prediction is oh man we going in deep on this um <laughs> we're at the 49 minute mario right at 50 minutes is there anything we need to cover before we dip set so so i after our first episode or uh, of of this particular segment season second part of season four i went back to watch the uh, uh, episode 76. Uh -huh. 77 now. I think we have already seen the founding Titan. I, I, I honestly think, and, I, and I'm not sure, I could be completely wrong, but you know how every Attack on Titan, you know, intro, they always drop something that we have just not been able to identify, not been able... So I've gone through it and there is a scene and I, you know, we're, I'm not, I don't want it to be shown here because, you know, I told, I showed the guys offline my thoughts, but I think we may have already seen the founding type. And if, and if it is, and if that, and what, and if what I saw is the founding Titan, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Cause it's something we've never seen before. It's it's literally a flicker in passing. It's literally a shot in passing, but because it happens so fast. But when you scrub through it and you see it, I'm just like, I don't know what that is. I just know it looks like it, it has the size of a Titan. And I think it's going to be the founding Titan because we've never seen anything like it before. So uh, I definitely look forward to, to, to scrubbing through that with y'all after the show. Um, so y'all can see it. But I, I, I was so excited when I saw it. I was like, oh, I'm gonna definitely drop this in this episode. This um, man then dropped I'm some heat this. on an right. episode that yeah, already man. cut us I, off. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and and I think that's why I was so that's why I was so that's why I dropped that's why I gave it an 85 out of hundred because I was sitting here like, please, I need my theory to be real. I need my theory to be real. <laughs> And when they didn't do it, um, right? When they didn't do it, I was like, "Dang, yeah, Kenya, I, I know, I know, I should." You're right, you're right. This is why we should never watch the intro. Cause, mm. and, but the thing is, at this point, Kenya, we we didn't catch it the first season when they were doing that stuff. We may have caught it second season, but we know definitely by third season, they always dropping little things in there that get explained somewhere in the end. So right. by fourth season, I'm just kind of looking through these things, trying to figure stuff out uh, frame by frame. And I happened to catch this one frame and I was like, this might be it. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, and by the way, Kenya, trust me, my, my team is trash. I'm not worried about what the Cowboys and the 49ers are doing. <laughs> you know, so you can't say anything to me that I, you can't say anything to me. My team is trash this year. I'm good. But I appreciate you. <laughs> I do have one prediction that's going to happen sooner than later because at this point now, it's a point of desperation in this war. Mm -hmm. I think that the female Titan is going to show up because she's 
still alive. She's still yeah. in this actual area. And at the point where Zeke dies or somebody, one of these Titans die, um, she's going to come out of it. And I don't, I don't know what that means, um, but they're saving her for something. Um, I just don't know how much time will happen for it. She, I think she's going to come out. She's going to come out after Aaron becomes the founding Titan. When you finally see the founding Titan, either when you finally see him become the founding Titan or where Mikasa, Armin, Levi, and this is just my, my thoughts. I think Mikasa, Armin, and Levi, Connor, you know, the main squad, they're, the, they're all going to get together to possibly try to stop Aaron. And when that happens, she's going to show up. I believe it. That's look, not that's look, my prediction. That's whatever what whatever <laughs> whatever he does that calls out the Titans, be it the ones in the wall, the ones uh, mm-hmm. the the uh, military guys that drunk the drunk the wine, I feel like that's gonna call her out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I don't even know what that means because she's a whole pound. Like she's she not really she's not a pushover, like she Matter of fact, she was the first time we saw that, like, we're laying hands and vindictive about it. Like, she, yep. she was torturing people. Yep. Um, but I don't, I wonder if she ages though. Did she age? Did she stay exactly the same in that? Oh, room? that's a good point. That is a good, that's I, a good point. I wonder if the 13 year clock still runs, even mm, though she's in that, that stasis part. state. That's a, that's a good question. But here, but here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Here's here's my here's my uh uh here's my my little uh moonshine on the flame to blow it up. Does it even matter at this point? Because if we have learned from um Zeke's mentor that the founding titan has the ability to malip- manipulate the gene the DNA and genes of the the Eldians, including the ones that are the regular titans or the uh, the higher level titans that we're seeing, does it even matter? Can they actually even stop Aaron at that point? Because if he can just manipulate them at his own, you know, at his own, right, you know, perhaps. will, right? Who who's to stop him from? Who's to say she's gonna run up and try to hit this dude, and he just waves his hand or or with a mere thought, and she just turns back into. Uh, Lionheart and and uh, and falls to her death or something in midair because she's no longer a Titan. Like that's the question I have. Like once he gets into contact with Zeke and becomes the founding Titan, does it even matter at that point? Like, can you even really stop him at that point? You know, that's that's the thing. Like if. It's it's just one of those it's just one of those things. It's like if King Midas can turn everything he touches into gold, and you try to attack him or try to stop him from doing it, and you end up touching him, can you really stop it? Look, this can is you really says stop it all. It? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, all right. When 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 Aaron Yeager becomes Kaiser Sose and he shows these men of will, what will really is, does anything else matter at that point? Like, can you stop him at that point? I don't think so. Yeah, no, nah, Kenya, really he, he killed the um, the Warhammer Titan, who was a female, but she wasn't the female Titan. Right. Um, so now, uh, Annie is still locked up or in her little chrysalis. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I don't have anything else, gentlemen. I'm gonna I'm not gonna rate this episode. I'm gonna watch it a couple more times and next week when we come back, I'll give y'all a number because I don't outside of my emotions on it just <laughs> cutting off, the episode mm-hmm. was perfect. Like, I could have never predicted anything that happened. So I'm gonna wait, give it a little bit of I'm, breathing room. I'm salty about that. I'm salty about that hey, cutoff. I am. I am. Can't I'll give it. A, I'll give it a nine out of ten. I'm, t- I'm docking a point for the cutoff, <laughs> but but for the abrupt cutoff because, mm-hmm. like like Chitty said, we're not used to seeing it. But but uh, it's still a phenomenal. Here's the thing: no, there's no Attack on Titan, and this is why we love this series. There's no Attack on Titan episode that you can say was 
trash right at all they've had their moments where it even feels like filler but even when those episodes feel like filler they give you something that is like okay it's worth sitting through 30 minutes of this just for it so right that nine out of ten for me on this one <laughs> that's my that's my rating oh uh, help me with y'all man all right mm-hmm. well we're gonna go <laughs> um we didn't go um for an hour thank god so <laughs> we're gonna just leave. barely just barely we <laughs> just barely missed it um but we'll be back next week and tonight we will be doing and doing a full um, discussion on Euphoria uh, season two. So definitely go and check out our sec- second episode after party for that. Um, gentlemen, where can people find you? Go ahead, LT. Oh, uh, uh, Ty Nitty on Instagram, T Y N I D D Y, Ty Nitty on Twitter, same spelling. Uh, YouTube, Horsepower Every Day. Uh, New YouTube channel coming soon. Just oh, figuring yes. out some details. It's coming. It's coming. It's right. coming. It's on, it's on. It's on the way. Yeah. Uh, let's see. On uh, 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 Twitter and Instagram is Chidi Seventeen C H I D I One Seven. And I'm so glad my wife reminded me to say this on SoundCloud. Chidi underscore Beats. Uh, just for. Uh, yeah, just you know, kind of, kind of beat ideas and whatnot. I'm a producer, photographer, all that good stuff. So you can definitely do there. And uh, photo photography is blue lightning photography on uh, Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. This man made a lo-fi that I've been like listening to on repeat. That and the Bell soundtrack have been on repeat in my household. So, Bell, Bell though. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish man. we had did a spoiled discussion on that because I want to watch. Oh yeah, when do y'all want to watch that again? Never mind. We'll, we'll talk about it all tonight. Yes. yes. Y'all take care. Because we literally just night. hit an hour. <laughs> and we're out. Okay, people. Yes. Peace. 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 Falling out the top of the- I'm a sea skyline, 50 mile radius.